So today I'm working on a 2014 Ram Eco Diesel. Uh, this truck has 207,000 miles on it. And uh, going through the motions of trying to troubleshoot a, a no start condition, this truck cranks over but does not fire up, doesn't even attempt to. Uh, I believe, from what I've already checked out, I believe it's the injection pump or the high pressure pump on the engine. Uh, you can see I already have a new one here on standby. But first thing I want to determine is the fuel pressure in between the, uh, the lift pump in the tank and the injection pump on the engine. So you can see here how I had this loop uh, rigged up and this goes to the fuel pressure gauge, which is at the corner of the hood. You can't really see it. And uh, so you can see this fitting right here, this is uh, coming from the lift pump in the tank. Uh, you know, diesel fuel is going through there at about 55 to 60 PSI. Um, you can see the arrows here to indicate directional flow. So this goes down to the injection pump and the excess fuel that is not used goes back to the fuel tank uh, here. Again, you can see the arrow here to indicate direction. So I'm obviously only interested in pressure right here. So you can see I had this loop set up with a fuel pressure gauge. And let me go in the truck cab here and check it out. So on these trucks, when you turn the key on, the fuel pump will cycle for about uh, 20 seconds or so. So I'm gonna turn the key on and we're gonna see how, what that fuel pressure gauge does. Okay, so that looks good. Um, and it should look good because I've actually replaced the uh, lift pump in this truck uh, probably 20,000 miles ago. So you can see it puts out a very healthy uh, 59, 60 PSI, which is perfect. Um, you should get have at least 55 PSI if you have below that, that's questionable. That might be a problem with the, uh, the lift pump in the tank or the fuel filter if it hasn't been replaced in a long time. So that looks good. You can see the pump has stopped cycling and the pressure is dropping. And that's perfectly fine. That's normal. So, while the computer doesn't keep track of the low pressure side of the fuel system, it does keep track of the uh, injection pressure in the fuel rail. So you can see here, I have an uh, Altel 808 scan tool. And I had these two values highlighted. So pressure target showing uh, the computer wants to get hit at least 3,900 PSI to get this thing started. Uh, fuel pressure right now is showing 103 PSI, but that's not really accurate because uh, this is a little bit outside of the uh, spectrum of accuracy for that fuel pressure uh, sensor on the rail. So, let me turn the truck off, turn it back on, and we're going to watch that the fuel rail pressure measured to see what kind of value we get. Okay, so you can see that was about 1500 PSI, something like that. Um, by the book, so obviously it shows here a value that it's trying to hit 3900 PSI. Um, from what I found in the service manual, a, the truck needs, an eco diesel needs at least 3,500 PSI to start. So I, yes. So with all this information, I believe the injection pump has failed. So I'm gonna go through the motions of replacing that and show you how to do that. Here we are looking down on the engine. Uh, as you can see, I actually already have the injection pump removed. Uh, nothing too complicated about removing it. Just take care in what you're doing. Um, I did. So it's hard to make out. There's such a mess of stuff here. So this part right here, I took, there's a 10 millimeter nut inside that bore. So I undid that nut so I can swing away these fuel lines. Um, I'll show you a tool that you really should have on hand for doing this job, or it's really nice, is something like this. Um, you might be able to make do with the tools that you have, but this tool is not that expensive. I, you know, you pick it up off of Amazon or whatever, uh, your local parts store, and it's really such a helpful tool to have. And it's to grab onto both sides of the uh, clips on this fuel line. So you can see there's 
one there at the tip of my finger and one on the opposite side. So very awkward to uh, grab and undo without that tool. So I can see, so I have that unbolted. These lines kind of swung away. Um, the wiring harness here. These two connectors, one is for the uh, coolant temp sensor in the water pump. The other one's for the fuel quantity solenoid on the injection pump. So I have that uh, pulled away. Um, there's two high pressure lines that go into the injection pump. So this one right here goes towards the passenger fuel rail. This one here goes towards the driver's fuel rail. Uh, by the book, you should be replacing these because you have to think about the extreme amount of pressure that's in these lines. Um, I mean, at wide open throttle under a full load, I mean, as much as 30, 35,000 PSI. So just an insane amount of pressure in these. Um, in this case, I will get the fuel lines, but for right now, I'm just trying to get this truck up and running. Uh, this truck's kind of on its last leg, so we're doing what we can to bring it back to life. Um, there's three bolts that hold the ejection pump to the uh, timing cover. One, two, and three. Uh, the bolts, they look like that. They have a 17 millimeter hex on them. Um, also, the uh, vacuum line. This vacuum line right here, I have undone from this fitting. Um, I have another section of it tucked away under there, so nothing too interesting there, but just get that vacuum line undone and get that out of your way. Also, the uh, the intercooler to throttle body hose I have undone. Uh, where did I stuff it? Okay. Well, the end of it's right here at the tip of my hand. Uh, there it is right there. So I undid it from there and just shoved it down to get it out of my way so I had more room in here to work with. Um, I'll show you with a mirror if I can see it, what that uh, injection pump engages with. So you can see. Hmm. Yeah, that's not much of a, well, you can just barely see there is, there's the camshaft gear with a timing chain on it, like you'll see on any other modern engine. And in front of that camshaft gear is a smaller gear. Um, and that's what actually engages with the injection pump. Now, you would think on a common rail diesel like this, since the computer controls the timing of the uh, injection event, um, that the timing of the injection pump really doesn't matter. And to an extent, it doesn't. But uh, the service manual encourages you to you know, time it correctly. And the whole reason for that is uh, to eliminate noise or to minimize noise. If the pump is timed way off, um, the pump might be extremely noisy. Now, another truck that had the recall done that I had a chance to work on for something else, but it had the recall done for the injection pump. I noticed that the pump on that was extremely noisy, noisier than what I've heard before. So I almost feel like even at the dealership, they timed it incorrectly. So that's just something to think about. But anyway, that truck is, again, this is another truck I'm talking about, but it's up and running, running around town, runs, it's healthy, it's strong. So um, it is what it is, I guess. So here is the uh, old and new injection pump. And you can see when I took it out, I very carefully marked um, in the service manual, they're always referring to this machined hole right here. And you can see here, I very carefully, once you undo those three bolts, grab it with both hands and just carefully wiggle it out. It shouldn't come out with too much force. But you can see here with the yellow uh, uh, oil-based paint marker, I have it uh, marked there for reference. And I'm gonna have to transfer over this gear and the nut over to the new one. And you know, in my case, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to line it up to the very best of my ability to right about there in the new pump, install it, and just run with it, see how it goes. So this truck's kind of on its last leg, and I'm just, uh, me and the owner, we're just doing everything we can to uh, keep it alive. So, yep, I'm going to go ahead and install this, and uh, I'll let you know how that goes. Okay, so as you can see, I have the uh, timing gear transferred over to the new injection pump. 
Uh, to the best of my ability, I lined it up exactly the way that it came out. You can see it using this hole as a reference. This hole is, this is all one piece, this timing gear and this uh, part behind it. So I've it lined up exactly how it was when it came out of the engine. Um, the nut on top, the uh, specification on it is 37 foot-pounds of torque. Um, I use a generous amount of red Loctite on that because you absolutely do not want that to loosen up ever. Uh, in fact, I'm going to give this time to cure for that red Loctite to cure before I start up the engine. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to reinstall this thing and then uh, see where I'm at. Okay, so you can see I have it back up and running. Uh, I have a new injection pump installed down there, you can see. Uh, I do not, I have not reinstalled the cover on it because honestly, I hate the covers on them. I hate any cover that hides or obscures problems. If something's leaking, I want to be able to see it. Uh, anyway, it's idling right now. It's about 3,800 to 4,000 PSI in the fuel rails. Uh, I want to add too, on top of replacing this uh, injection pump, I also, just to make sure everything is covered, I replaced both fuel rails with uh, new genuine Bosch units. Uh, the the, the uh, passenger side fuel rail has a pressure sensor in it, and then the driver side fuel rail has a pressure regulator in it. So that was really just to cover all my bases and you know make sure everything was tipped off on it. Um, I did reuse the, uh, the uh, high pressure fuel lines, which, you know, by the book, it's always recommended to replace them uh, because of the extreme pressure in the lines. But in my case, I'm reusing them for this particular truck. Let me test drive it, observe it, but everything's looking really great. Uh, truth, truthfully, I've never had any issue with reusing the uh, existing lines, the high pressure lines. But, you know, do so at your own discretion and uh, just keep an eye on it. But yeah, hopefully that helps out. Um, I didn't go into too much detail on uh, actually pulling the pump from the motor because it's really easy to do. It's just those three bolts and then you know you grab the pump with both hands and then wiggle it out from the uh, timing cover and it pulls straight out. Uh, the pump itself is it's fairly difficult to rotate so as long as you're pulling it straight out uh, you should be able to see exactly how the, uh, the gear is uh, um, aligned. So hopefully that helps somebody out, but the point of this video is to show that replacing the, inject the injection pump on an eco diesel, it's pretty easy to do if you have just basic mechanical uh, common sense. So hopefully that helps somebody out.